In this video, we're going to use methylene iodide to separate out heavy minerals. Since methylene iodide is about three times more dense than water, things like quartz and other minerals will actually float on top of it. But you got to realize, for one, this video is going to be really tedious going through every single step. And methylene iodide is not something to play around with because it's extremely carcinogenic and it's mutagenic. I would strongly suggest that you check out either the link above or you look at this PDF where I'm gonna everything has to be used in the hood. So you're gonna notice that everything I use in the hood that's touched MI or been near MI stays in the hood. That includes gloves, anything you're mixing it with, even the filter papers. First thing we wanna do is clean every counter, every surface that we're gonna use to make sure there's no residual sample anywhere. Biggest problem is contamination. If you get one zircon in a sample that's not from that sample, it can skew all the results and therefore all the inferences. So we gotta make sure this whole lab is spotless. Counter's done, time for the fume hood. My own personal rule is, since we're training students, sometimes people can get sloppy if they're just learning this, I don't touch anything inside this fume hood unless I'm wearing gloves. Personal safety. Using either alcohol or soapy water, wash the fume hood. As you do it, you scrub everything off into the sink. So any grains, they completely leave the counter. And if you bust tables, you're gonna be great. All right, next step is to set up all your filter paper. For this process, you're gonna need three filter papers that go on the side of the sinking minerals, like zircon, barite, apatite, pyrite, blah, blah, blah. On the other side, if you've got a pretty decent size, like half of 50 milliliters, 20 to 30 milliliters, then you're gonna want at least four filter papers, all folded and ready to go. To fold your filter paper, you literally take a round one, Fold it in half, fold it in corners, and then you open it so there's only one thickness to three thicknesses. And then you open it up, and then you squish it and fold it. So now it forms a nice square. And you're gonna make seven of these. Now that we've got four filters and three filters, time to set up the hood. For this first technique, we're only after zircon. And so we're gonna use what we call the popsicle method. And to set that up, the first thing we need are a pair of flasks. These I'm scrubbing with this scrubber. You make sure you get in the flask with soap and water, scrub out the bottom, and then spray it with a strong jet of water. And that ensures that these flasks are extremely clean. And therefore, if you blow out a filter paper, you can always rescue your sample out of the bottom of this flask. A set of funnels for those flasks. And this is where our filter paper is gonna go. So you can set up your first set of filter papers, a little beaker that's gonna hold your sample in place. So for us, we're gonna use this sample pretty much at an optimum size at 10 milliliters for the popsicle method smaller and you're going to have to waste some MI, any larger and you might have to split it into two separate batches. So I like to tap it, get all the sediment off the walls and then we can set it into our beaker and then for that we're going to need a stir rod so just set that right there. When you have MI in this hood you do not stick your head in the hood. You saw me do it before for camera but now the biggest rule is MI never leaves this hood unless you have breathing gear on and you never go into this hood ever if MI is open. Now, before you bring MI out, you need to put on all the safety gear. That's eyeglasses, a lab coat. Make sure you button it up. When you're actually pouring or working with MI, it's always good to have a face shield on. And that's not only for safety, but MI has a very low viscosity. And so any carelessness, and you can actually mist it quite easily. 
So face shield when you're pouring MI. And then finally, another layer of gloves. And if you're using gloves that others have used, it's always good to have these gloves on underneath. I like to remind myself that the gloves need to stay in the hood just like all the MI. So I think of these as magic gloves. So in the hood, we're okay. Come out of the hood, gloves off. In the hood, gloves on. Out of the hood, gloves off. But let me show you some glove etiquette. So if these aren't your personal gloves, you basically have to expect all the fingers to have some sort of residue on them. I like to think of, of it as complete contamination. So I'm going to put these gloves on, then I'm going to go wash them. But let me show you how to put gloves on, because a lot of people don't realize this. The back of the gloves is considered pristine. You do not want to touch the back of the glove with the front of the other glove. If you do that, you've just put contaminant all over the gloves, top to bottom. So, because this hand is clean, you can put this glove on like this, like normal. But to put the other glove on requires a bit of care. I never touch the black part of the glove to the blue, because if you've done that, the minute you then touch the back of this with a clean hand, you've just spread either methyl iodide or other contaminants. So this takes a little bit of practice, but you have to basically inch your way up that glove without allowing the black to touch the blue. And there you have it. So now these gloves are on, the blue area is still pristine, and when you take them off, black to black, I then use the back of this glove to grab the front of that glove. I like to actually label my gloves so I know that I'm the only one that's touched these. But these gloves are brand new out of the box. So I know that any of this handling before I mess with MI is still clean. We keep our MI under lock and key because of how dangerous it is and because of how expensive it is. So in here, we have a fresh bottle of MI. And literally, it goes straight up into the fume hood. I'm not wearing a respirator because this cabinet is also ventilated through the fume hood. OK, now comes the part. We've got our MI on the counter. We're going to pour it into the test tube. And the way you do that, spin the cap off. I like to hold the test tube in the place of the beaker very solidly to the bottom of the counter. So that thing is stable, it's not going to move anywhere. Then slowly tip the jar of MI in and let it just trickle in. And you want the separation to be about three quarters to a full inch between the sediment floating on the top and the sediment that has sunk. So all that middle ground is just MI. And then when you're done pouring, make sure you get the little drip off the rim of the MI bottle to go down into that test tube. So do that wipe off. Cap the MI bottle and immediately get it out of here. So I put it back down into our ventilated cabinet. Next step is to take your stir rod and basically agitate that sample. And so I like to do this a couple times. Stir it, let it separate, clear up the MI. Stir it, let it separate, clear up the MI. Because if you have a decent sized sample from 10 milliliters up to 20 milliliters, and you have a zircon that is at the top of all the light stuff, it has to work its way through all that matrix. So stirring, letting it separate, it could still take zircon with it up to the top. So stir it again, let it separate. Then maybe that zircon's come to the middle of the lights. Stir it again, and hopefully then all the zircons have worked their way out of the light quartz and sank to the bottom of that MI. So I'm gonna let that set, and now it's time to prepare the cryo technique. So here's our giant doer of liquid nitrogen, and basically when we're not freezing worms or flowers, we're actually doing research. The simplest way 
to get some liquid nitrogen is just a styrofoam coffee cup. So I have a normal size coffee cup to contain the excess and then just the bottom of a piece of coffee cup and this is going to be our dipping reservoir. So I fill this one and it's going to take a little bit for this tube to get super chilled for the liquid to actually come out. You notice I left the MI gloves in the hood. If you're not comfortable or haven't done this before, you might want to put on some big gloves just to prevent any kind of freeze burn. And my technique is to put it into the edge of the cup and a ventry of liquid will form, but it keeps it from flying out of the cup. Now we're ready to go back in the hood. Now we pour from the filler cup into our little reservoir bowl. And this is the popsicle part. So carefully pick up the MI filled test tube. I like to do a little last tap. Hopefully any little bit of zircons will float down. And then you want to freeze just the tip. Basically just above the sediment that have sank, you want to freeze that. Not too far. Especially if you don't have a lot of free space of pure MI between the floaters and the sinkers. You want to just try and freeze only the sediment on the bottom. So to do that, you just dip it down in. And then I like to count to 15 thousand, so 1 1,000, 2 1,000, 3 1,000, 4 1,000, 5 1,000, 6 1,000, 7 1,000, 14 1,000, 15 1,000. So now it's frozen solid. Notice I freeze it above the tapered tip to about 5, 7.5 milliliter mark. That ensures that frozen plug doesn't fall out as you're tilting the test tube and rinsing out all those floaters in the other MI. We have our acetone ready, and we basically hose it down, going around and around in the tube, keeping everything angled downward so it runs right out. You gotta do this quick before it melts, but I always like to look in there, and if I can see any specks, I keep doing this round and round with the thing tipped down. And then once you've totally rinsed it out, you can then throw it over into the other funnel. And at this point, you just have to wait for that to melt. Whereas this one over here, you can start rinsing it right away. And I like to rinse it and also kind of fluff it with the stir rod because you're now trying to rinse out all of the MI. Probably the coolest thing about MI, besides the fact that it's three times denser than water, is that it's soluble in acetone. So you can rinse everything off with acetone to get rid of the MI. Acetone dissolves into the water, MI does not, and it falls out. Now that the MI has melted back into liquid form, we are going to pour it into this other funnel on the far right. So just like when we were rinsing out the floaters, we dump it in, keeping it tipped down, we spray all the way around the edges and then you look down into the tube to make sure you see no more sediment. So I can still see a little bit in there, so I'm gonna do this over and over again until I'm totally sure that all the sinkers have come out of this test tube. So it looks clean, but I'm gonna do it one more time. And that way, this sample had a lot of sinkers, but in some cases, there will be so few grains and so small, 30 micron, that you just have to pretend like something is still in there and keep rinsing just to make sure everything is out of the test tube and safely into the filter paper. That concludes the unique parts of the procedure for the popsicle method when you're just trying to get zircon. Next, what I'd like to show you is the procedure for separating out both Appetite and Zircon using the separatory funnel. And so that's using a modified separatory funnel that's been basically cut from the original stock where we had it professionally cut and then melted. So it's a nice smooth edge that we can easily access either pouring sample and MI in or actually scooping the floating sample out. You have your little pet cock here, push it into the wider end of the separatory funnel. Then you put the O-ring, then this little white washer, 
that has a slit in it, has to be put on the right way, and then finally the green nut. Clamp that down, make sure it spins nice and freely, but not too loose or it'll actually drip the MI. And so once this has been put together, we can then put it into the fume hood and get that set up going. The only difference with the separatory funnel out here is that you need to get another set of filter papers. So three more than you had for the popsicle method. And that's because you're gonna have a whole nother flask and funnel set up. So you wanna have four filters for the floaters. Then you wanna have three filters for the suspended appetites. And then you wanna have three filters for the sinking zircon. Once you have those, you can then set up everything in the hood. To set up for the separatory funnel technique, you need an extra flask and funnel. That should give you three flasks and funnels. Then you also need a ring stand. And then you also need your separatory funnel. I also like to have a spoon on hand and that allows you to scoop out the floaters if you have a really large sample. A stir rod. And then finally, we have an extra MI bottle down below that is used to drain the middle MI. And so this is the bottle. You can see it says no acetone. And so that's what we're gonna use to drain off MI so we don't have to recycle it. We can basically put pure MI back into there, filter it again, reuse it. And so that's pretty much the setup. And uh, let's do the next step. To start the separatory funnel process, the first thing we do is we pour some MI into our funnel. When we do that, we leave the lid off of the MI bottle. You'll see in a minute. So now we have our sample. We pour our sample into that separatory funnel. I like to flick it real good and hard. Make sure any static is not holding on to our sample. So now that we have our sample in that separatory funnel, we then stir it up. And I like to stir it up at least twice to make sure that if any zircon are stuck within those floaters, they have time to work their way down that matrix and finally fall out of the bottom. All right, so this is where it gets a little hectic because you only have two hands. And we've just finished stirring and now time is of the essence. So the first thing that we wanna get rid of are the zircons at the bottom. And to do that, you wanna really quickly spin that petcock so it just drops everything right at the bottom. So it's a real quick 180 of the petcock. Boop. And you make sure, did all the zircon come out? If it didn't, you do it again. So now we've gotten rid of everything that sinks. The next key, we get rid of our tri-corner beaker, we put into place our MI bottle, we then put in that funnel. So this is gonna be our appetite funnel. We're gonna get rid of everything in the middle. And that's where our appetite is suspended. And so I'm gonna let everything out and then stop at everything at the top. So this might take some time to get your timing just right, but you gotta do it. You can even be conservative. You don't have to get it right to the petcock where you stop those floaters. So you let it flow out, let it flow out, let it, oh, and there we go. So I was able to catch the rest of those floaters. And then finally, you open the rest and you can just let it rinse on out. And so all the floaters then go over here. Do a real good job rinsing out of that separatory funnel, top and bottom. So the beautiful part of this separation technique is that we have our zircon here, we have our appetite here, and since that was where most of the MI was, we're actually able to put the MI right back into our bottle. We don't have to recycle it. We just have to filter it one more time and we can use it for another separation. And then finally, we have our lights over here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wash our lights and our zircons with acetone. 
And that means that these two are going to have to be recycled. Once all the MI is drained out of the appetite, we can then take that funnel and quickly put it on its flask. Then we can put the lid back on the MI, and this will go down into its cabinet and get out of our way. Now we can actually get rid of the ring stand. We're done with it. I'll just move it to the back. Now we basically go through the same technique of rinsing out the filter paper. So the floaters, that's our main sample size. So we're going to do four filter papers for it. And the appetite of the zircon are really small, so we only need three filter papers for those. But each filter paper, you're going to rinse it five times before you can change it. And that's it for the separatory funnel technique. Now that we've finished the whole MI process, the last thing to do is rinse. And so what we're going to do is rinse the floaters. And I like to rinse it until I can see acetone staying on top. And then rinse the sinkers. And for each set of filter paper, I'm going to do this at least five rinses. So five rinses on both, wait till that dries, switch out your filter paper. And for the floaters, since this was a pretty good sample size, we're going to do at least four filter papers because the MI likes to stick to the actual paper versus rinse all the way through. And since the sinkers were so much smaller, all we have to do is three filter papers. Now that both sides have been rinsed five times, we can change filter paper. So I have my clean filter here. I always like to do a little lucky test tap. Pull out the old paper, put in the new, tip it up. And if you folded these correctly, you can actually hold it open like that. And as you hold it open, you can then just spray it out with the acetone and it'll drop right down back into the new filter paper. Making sure, just as everything else, be real systematic about hosing down the filter paper with acetone to make sure every last grain is back into there. Now for the sinkers, and this is your baby. This is what you've done all this processing for. So you need to be meticulous, make sure every movement counts so nothing gets wasted. So you ready for this? So you pick up the old, put in the new, and you hold open the filter, voila. And then for this one, you really want a strong acetone squirt, making sure you get every single grain off the old filter paper down into the fresh one. And then I like to make a pile of the old filter papers because we're going to have to stack all these, fold them, put them in their own bag for special disposal. Now we're ready to rinse this out four more times. And I like to not only rinse out the inside of the filter paper, but I also like to pick up the paper and rinse out the funnel. And that ensures that I'm getting all the MI off of that funnel for when I actually want to wash it in the sink. So that one's been done now. Rinsed that guy out. Pick it up. Rinse out the funnel. Okay, three more rinses to go. Two more rinses to go. One more rinse to go. After each rinse, you want to make sure that it basically percolates all the way through and stops dripping. When you go to change the filter paper, you want to make sure that it's become dry. Now we've got our floaters. So we can pour those into a fresh new test tube because the test tube it was in got dirtied with MI.
Remember this is four filter papers later. So it should not smell like MI. If you smell anything that's resembling almonds, it's not clean, you messed up. Don't let it happen again. So now that we have it in the tube, we label this tube. This tube, researchers are Def, Fav, and Gerals. Sample name again, steps. And then finally, on this one, we write MI for methylene iodide and then an arrow pointing up. That means that these are the floaters. These go in the bag with the rest of the sample. Okay, now the sinkers have dried, so we've pulled them out of the fume hood. Since we've gone through so much filter paper and rinsed this, it's pretty much free of MI, so we don't have to worry about safety, breathers, or anything. For the labeling process, all we're gonna use is weighing paper to hold the grains and a little snap cap vial to actually safely store it. So all we gotta do is pull out one sheet of weigh paper, fold it in half, fold it into a quarter, and now we're gonna label it. This sample is Dafov slash Gerals. Those are the researchers. Sample name is WR10, and it's a detrital zircon, so DZ. And then it's always good to write whatever process this sample went through. So started out jaw crusher, JC, then pulverizer, PV, then the water table, WT, hand mag, HM, then the fronds, FR, and then finally it was put through methyl iodide. So MI, and then an arrow pointing down because these are the sinkers. Now this is ready to accept our sample. So what I like to do is take my weigh paper and actually use the lid to that disposable test tube and hold my weigh paper in place. So you'll notice the weigh paper tilts up like a backstop. And then I can take the sample. Remember, this is your baby. And so very carefully tilt it towards the middle where all those folds cross into that weigh paper and then Finally move it back and forth, aiming it straight down in the middle of that weigh paper. If you do this enough, everything has now gone from the filter into the weigh paper. Now when you're done with that, you then take your little lid weight off, fold it back into the way it was. And so I have my own special origami technique. You can come up with your own. If you want, you can make a pterodactyl or a swan or what have you. I like to try and lock this paper so nothing can come out if our snap cap tends to fall over. So what I do is I fold the top over and then I fold little wings up the sides. So I do a wing on both sides. Looks like a little rat with ears. And so those ears now are what's going to hold it into place in your snap cap vial. So you pop the lid off. Then you push this onto the side of the vial and you actually pull those ears over the rim. Now with those ears pulled over the rim, once you put that lid on, it's locked in. So if this thing gets shipped or it falls over, nothing can spill out of that. First thing is before anything leaves this fume hood, you want to first rinse it with acetone. So, our little beaker that held our test tube. So I'm washing both the inside and the outside of this funnel before it leaves the hood. To get the MI back out of the acetone, all you have to do is add water. So you add water, it'll go cloudy, and you keep adding water till it goes back to clear. And if you run out of flask space, pour some off into a new flask, 
and keep adding water. If you don't add enough water till it goes clear, you're actually going to be dumping some MI out with the acetone. What's pretty cool though is if you add water to just acetone without MI, it doesn't go cloudy, it stays clear. So this cloudiness is a process of the MI coming out of the acetone. So you can see that the MI is hanging out at the bottom and the acetone and water is floating at the top. So now what we need to do is we need to pour off just the water. Now we've come to the point in the game where the MI has to come out of the fume hood. So to do that safely, you have to grab a respirator. To put the respirator on, all you really got to do is make sure that you have an airtight seal. Because you want to make sure all the air is coming in through these cartridges. So you put on the top, clip the bottom, seal them. If you can breathe any air in, you don't have a good seal. I seal it, I choke, so we're good. Once that is on, put on your face shield, and now you can actually take the flasks out of the fume hood and go dump the water off in the waste barrel. First we need to take the lid off of the waste barrel, spin that off. Next we have a funnel up here in that little red tote. And with that funnel ready, we can go get our MI. So as you pour the MI into this funnel, you want to take your time because you're going to see the puddle of MI at the bottom and you want to make sure that that doesn't get poured out as well. So pour slowly and as that MI puddle starts working its way towards the exit, you want to back off. You don't want to get carried away. You can always put more water in, rinse your MI and pour that off. Then you pour the rest of this MI into a storage flask that's down in the vented cabinet. When you're pouring these flasks into themselves, it's best to tip the one that you're pouring into. That way it keeps any kind of splashes from happening. I like to give each flask a nice acetone rinse to make sure all the MI has come out of it. So I like to rinse, I like to rinse the sides and then I like to spray the bottom while it's tipped into the storage jar. We can take that and soap it down and scrub it. Now since we've used some acetone to rinse out those other flasks, I'm going to add some more water to this storage flask and then I'm going to go dump that as well and then replace it with water. The storage flask that goes down in the vented cabinet should always have as pure water as you can put all the way to the top and that creates a seal to prevent the MI from evaporating out until we have time to recycle all this. Lastly, we have to dispose of all the paper that's come into contact with MI. We have some large Ziploc bags in the upper cabinet. Those are your disposal bags. And if you're good at folding, you should be able to fit six samples worth into one of these little Ziplocs. Make sure you tie it up, keep everything together. And now we're going to scrub our gloves and all the dishes. I'm not going to go into the tedium of doing dishes, but just make sure that you get all the surfaces, either with a sponge or a pipe cleaner, or even this long sucker for getting to the bottom of the flasks. But before we head upstairs, we want to look in the microscope to make sure this is pure zircon, because if it's not, we have other steps. 
All right, looking through our sample, it is dismal. So I do see some zircon grains, but the problem is, is I see that it's about 98% barite. So we're gonna have to wiggle bug it. Check out that video. And then it's about one to one and a half percent pyrite. So we're gonna have to acid wash it. Check out that video. But looking through it, I do see at least 1% zircon. So once we get rid of those, we'll be all right. Sadly though, this sample is not ready to be mounted. So lots more steps. Check out those videos. Last things to do are file all the separates in our separates drawer. Throw away the papers and filters that made it out here on the counter because now they're pretty much clean, free of MI. Finally, wipe down all your counters, both out here and wipe them down inside the fume hood. And lastly, refill all the acetone bottles that you've used. So essentially you just want to leave this lab exactly the way you showed up.